So I have to admit that this video actually took a direction that I didn't anticipate when I first saw George's videos. Uh, so if you're not familiar, the rapture did not take place on the 15th of June, as he said it was going to. Matter of fact, he had it down to pretty much the minute, as far as that goes. And so, um, and I, I got to say, it's funny when people are, you know, oh, yeah, it's going to happen. You still here? Uh, I, I know he is, because <laughs> he made videos. Uh, and he was like, oh, well, we're still in the day. And then he's like, now we got a window between here and, and however he pronounces Yom Tara, Yom Terua. And uh, so anyway, and then now he's actually saying, oh, when Paul said the last Trump, that's actually Feast of Trumpets. And I'm thinking, oh, cool. You know, maybe he'll teach his nearly 40,000 subs the truth about all this stuff, because he did, he cited a couple sources. One of the sources he cited was, was I think it was Ken Johnson's book, where he actually cites this book here. Um, but, and so I don't, I don't, you know, fine, great. If somebody is going to teach the truth and maybe it'll stop more and more of these, quote unquote, these date setters, these, these watchmen, as they call themselves, from picking all these dates other than that particular one, then, hey, I'm all for that. I don't care how people get the truth as long as they get the truth. I have a suspicion that when that day comes and goes this year that he'll have, he'll, I'm just, at first I thought to myself, he's probably going to end up choosing a December 25th uh, day for the rapture because he's got it in his head that it's going to be this year. It has to be because all this other stuff that, that he has put out there in his videos and, uh, and I, that's a dangerous place to be because you're believing something that is not most likely true. It, and I will never criticize somebody for l trying to figure out what day Yom Tatrua lands on. There will be arguments between when the barley was ripe and when it wasn't ripe and all that kind of stuff. And so I, to me, it's, it's when Paul said last Trump, and if they're looking at a date and say September slash October for Yom Tatrua and, uh, you know, they're spotting the crest of the new moon, never going to criticize that. Um, because you're at least trying to observe that day. Same thing for if you're going to have a Passover Seder and you, you know, spend a week eating unleavened bread just to uh, go along, because it does say that we're going to be doing that forever. So there's that. But I'll never criticize anybody for doing that, for sighting the crescent of the new moon for the first day of the seventh month. Um, but like I said, this video went in a direction that I didn't, I, I was like, okay, now I see what's going on here. So. When this video popped up, I was like, I'll move me over here, get out of the way. And so I was like, this is a piece of foolishness. Like I first, I was like, his cheese has slid off his cracker. Like, and he points out all this stuff that's on his desk and the story about the disappearing, reappearing mouse and all that kind of stuff. And, and then he, he's like, oh, this is what all this stuff means and all that. And I'm just like, oh my God. And so I thought about that for a couple of days, and I was just like, what in the world is this guy doing? And then it dawned on me, because I actually spent a little time studying the occult a while back, and I'm like, this is divination. This guy is teaching people basically witchcraft. He's using a, a very popular subject, which is the rapture, and he is showing people basically divination, which is forbidden as far as the Bible is concerned. So I'll just get into the whole... Um, Move me over here. Uh, divination, the art or practice that seeks to foretell, or excuse me, foresee or foretell future events or discover hidden knowledge, usually by the interpretation of omens, and I'll get to that one in a minute, or by the aid of supernatural powers. So one thing I want you guys to notice here is the difference between omens and, and signs, as it were, as it relates to the Bible itself. And I'll bring up the definition of omen, and then I'll kind of give you a, an interpretation of scripture as far as that goes. But anyway, um, little bird landed on the thing outside. So, omen, an occurrence or phenomenon believed to portend a future event. So, uh, example of that would be, if you remember the movie Troy, where they're debating about the war that they're going to have, and the one guy was just like, I just spoke to two farmers, and they saw an eagle with a serpent clutched in its talons, and this is a sign from Apollo, whatever. Okay, so it's not a supernatural event is what I'm trying to get to as far as that goes. Um, so if we look at scripture as far as the signs and context, um, this is the wedding at Cana. 
Yeshua turned water into wine. He says this is the beginning of signs that Jesus did in Cana and Galilee and manifest his glory and his disciples believed him. So turn the miracle, there's a miracle component to signs as far as, as it relates to God. It's not just, oh, they saw a bird. Isaiah chapter 7 says, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgins shall conceive and bear a son and, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Acts chapter 7, he brought them out of the land, referring to Moses, uh, after he had shown wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness for 40 years. And anybody that is aware of those accounts, there was a lot of signs that actually took place. Parting the Red Sea, probably impossible without God itself. So that's the difference between an omen and a sign. Now, as it relates to omens, uh, does he practice that? Uh, well, I mean, here's this where he showed us that he had the, this dream and the thing and has the three. I, I'm, I'm sorry. That, what are the probabilities of a guy dressed in camouflage that is hunting deer is going to see three deer? But he's taking this not as, and he, I, I think he may have called it a sign or whatever, but the, technically, again, not miraculous. So this is this would more fall into the, the omen world. Um, and we're told here not to practice uh, divinations or soothsaying. I actually brought this up because I think the English Standard Version actually call, uh, says for divination, it's the interpretation of omens. And then soothsaying is, is uh, fortune telling. So we're told not to do this over and over again. I just brought this one thing up as far as that goes. But this whole thing right here, taking all this stuff, and I'm, I'm going to just say this because this was the thing that got me. A Christmas tree does not represent Yeshua, does not represent the Messiah at all. It's the, the whole Yule that Christians somehow took over. Well, let me not even say that. Years ago, there was a video that I did on this woman who claims to be a Christian witch. There are witches that claim to be Christians. And somebody was like, is it possible that you can do that? And it's like, well, yes, but no. Like if you're, if you're overtly don't doing it and you know the word says that witch, don't practice witchcraft and you're practicing witchcraft, um, then yeah. But at the same time, there's a lot of witchcraft that has worked its way into the church itself. Um, so obviously when it comes to the eight witches Sabbaths, some of them are uh, observed by the Christian church, such as Christmas and Easter, which was, they had their own names before they stole them basically. But anyway, it was most likely witches that came into the church and kind of sold them on this idea. Uh, another thing, um, and I got the hint when I first moved out here, I was watching a video on uh, a seance. Um, and one of the things that they were doing, they kept saying, don't break the circle, don't break the circle. So they're around a table and they're all holding hands and they're like, don't break the circle. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting because you don't find the idea of holding hands to pray for your meal like we do in the South and probably a lot of other places. But anyway, that was big. Like everybody hold hands, we're gonna say grace. You know, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, first eat, eats the most. Uh, you know, bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies and all that kind of stuff. So, we, but everybody's holding hands. And I'm just like, that came straight out of a seance. We're basically divining, we're trying to talk to, well, it would, we think we're talking to God, but we're incorporating some sort of witchcraft thing into our life. When you cut down a tree and you bring it to your house and you decorate it with all these little idols um, and, and, and put presents and all that, you, you are practicing Yule which honors the Antichrist, which by the way, there's a really good article. I will leave a link for this. Um, I don't know what these people believe in. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, uh, they have the article, Do Christmas Trees Honor Christ? And so if you're interested, I'm not going to really touch upon this. I usually try to touch up when we get closer to actual Christmas itself, but they go through the history of all of it. I thought they did a real good job of saying, hey, look, this represents Nimrod. Um, and, and another thing that I'm not going to go in, in deeply, but it could be that Nimrod somehow gets reincarnated because of a verse in Revelation, uh, so he may be coming back. But that, as he uh, was killed and he became the, the, the sun god that so many pagan cultures worshipped, um, so yeah, that's what that represents. So for him to even say that, like I was just like, really? Are you kidding me? But then I realized what he was doing here, and he's he's practicing divination here. Um, I brought this, uh, uh, 
yeah, methods of divination. Uh, this is a website called Learn Religions. I brought it up real fast. There's probably all sorts of places that you can go online and look, but they basically go through. Here's tarot cards, if you're probably familiar with where they'll lay out a story and try to figure out the future or something like that using cards. Um, some of these I've never even heard of, the, the, the Celtic Ogham, uh, the Norse runes. Uh, so yeah, I've heard of reading tea leaves. Um, I'm not sure of the practice itself. I haven't uh, <laughs> dove into it. This was a new one. I wasn't aware of pendulum divination. Um, osteomancy, if you remember the Robin Hood, uh, what was it, the Prince of Thieves, the, the Kevin Costner one, and the witch there where she like throws a bunch of bones into a thing. I mean, that's what she's, she's practicing, some form of divination, probably this osteomancy. Um, Lithomancy, the divination with stones. I This is the first time I've ever even seen that word before, scrying. Uh, okay, yeah. But numerology, he doesn't practice numerology, does he? I, I don't think I've seen him do that. that that's, anyway. Um, yeah, and then automatic writing. Oh, gosh, I had a teacher in college that she was my history of art teacher, and she was into, I should say is, not was, is into some stuff uh and she tried to get us to I, she called it something else but it was some, still some sort of autonomous writing to see if, if you put your you know your pen to the paper and just blank your mind and if you just started just scribbling if, if actual words would come out of it um and so yeah there there's so so my point in all this like besides whatever like when i first saw his videos they were different from other uh which is why it wasn't just a quick, uh, well, he's saying Pentecost for the rapture, and that's not it. I mean, according to just Theodore Gassner alone, we know that the last trump is Rosh Hashanah of Yom Teruah. Uh, so right off the bat, that, that was easy. But there was something there that was just like, something's not right about this guy. And then now it's pretty obvious. I mean, what he's doing is he's divining all this information. He's, he's practicing divination with this, this nonsense. I mean, cause I just, what, you know, and then, and, well, what, what does the, the single zip tie represent? A bondage, uh, the, the, the clippers is that represents circumcision. Um, yeah, I, again, I, so he's basically bringing witchcraft into the church. I mean, and there's so many things I, I actually, and that's one of the reasons after I had discovered some of these things that were actually in the church that existed, that I decided I'm going to spend a little time studying the occult. There is a YouTuber, uh, his name is William Schnoblin. Uh, he also might see his videos where he uh, goes by Bill Schnoblin. Uh, but he, his testimony was that he was in it. Uh, he was a witch and they said that if he ever got in trouble, that he should join the, the Mormon church. And he did, and he joined the Mormon Church. So he's got videos on witchcraft and, and things like that that are, exist, exist out there. Uh, he's got uh, videos on uh, the Mormon Church, if you ever wanted to learn a little bit more of that. And, of course, moving out here, I'm a, a lot, around a lot more Mormons, so it was interesting to be able to do that and, and have a little bit more knowledge into what they believe uh, instead of just this little, like, there's a couple of guys that walk around. Well, I think one of them moved, but... They knocked on my door several months ago and we had like a three hour conversation and I got into a lot of the topics that I've shared here uh, on this YouTube channel. Uh, and so, but one of them was very interested in Deuteronomy 12 where it, it talks about don't learn when you dispossess these, these heathen, these, these, these pagans that are out here. Don't, don't learn their ways. Don't figure out how they communicated with their gods and all that and then do it as you're doing it for me. He's like, no, don't do that. And here we are. We've, We've done some of that stuff. We, you know, people will fight tooth and nail, like, oh, Christmas is not pagan. Yeah, yeah it is. It's Yule. It's, 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 and it goes back to, and when you know the story of Semiramis and Nimrod and Tammuz, then you can actually start to pick all that stuff out of the Bible. Um, Catholic priest, uh, when I was in uh, Jordan, asked me what I was giving up for Lent. And I'm like, is that in the Bible? And he's like, yeah, you know, Jesus fasted for 40 days. And so we should. And so I look it up and I find it. I'm like, oh, here it is. It's Ezekiel chapter eight. Uh, God calls this an abomination. It, you know, it's weeping for Tammuz is what you're actually doing. But, but they put that veneer of Jesus on the outside of it. And so you think, 
oh, I'm doing this for Jesus, even though he never asked you to do it. And it kind of comes down to that whole uh, verse that basically says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. But in this situation, it looks like um, instead of just admitting fault and saying, oh, you know, I, I was wrong about this, all this stuff that I divined from all these little things, these deer and the this and that and all the nonsense and the pyramids and all that, uh, I missed it. Instead, it's like, oh, no, 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 we're dialing in the scope. We're learning a little bit more because, you know, my, my mouse went missing and then it came back. Uh, okay. And so that's one thing that I want you to see as far as the difference between the signs and the omens. And we're told not to interpret omens. We're not supposed to. And, and you know, and I see Christians do it all the time. They don't really think much of it. I mean, we, we grow up in a pagan thing. They're just like, oh, this happened. And so that it must have some sort of spiritual significance to it. Um, or we're not supposed to interpret omens. We're not supposed to learn what those people did and do it as we're doing it for God. And yeah, so anyway, um, I actually never thought that I would actually see this uh, because once I started realizing that there was witchcraft that was actually in the church, uh, I started following a, a young lady on YouTube a few years ago uh, who taught uh, certain pagan things. And that's when I learned there were different types of witches out there. And one of the more popular witches that exists uh, among women specifically is the kitchen witch. It's also known as a cottage witch or a hearth witch. And so they're basically doing the same. And so when they set up their altar and stuff like that, they're, they're doing it not to cast spells on people or anything like that. What they're doing is they're just trying to build their home. And so they have an altar and they set it up eight times a year for the different things. And she talked about uh, shaker jars and all kinds of stuff. And I've seen Christians do that. Uh, well, they put prayers in with some grains and stuff like that. Maybe not to the extent that she did where she was throwing in some herbs and some crystals and all that kind of stuff. And one of the things that she said uh, that got my attention was, it doesn't matter how little or how much you're doing, just as, as long as you know what you're doing. And so she said, when it comes to Yule, maybe you wear one green sock and, and one red sock. Uh, and she goes, but it really doesn't matter since the Christians, they, you know, they bring a tree into their house and they do all this stuff. So it's not like anybody's going to realize that you're a witch because you're doing the exact same thing that they're doing. But I watched her because I wanted to see what other things might actually have landed inside the church itself. Uh, and, uh, that, um, we don't think about as far as, you know, oh, this is like, again, the whole holding hands while we pray over dinner. So I won't do it anymore. Like if I'm around people and they're like, okay, let's say grace. I'm like, okay, you know, like, are you going to hold hands? No, I'm not. <laughs> Cause I know where that comes from. So yeah, it comes down to knowledge. Uh, and I, and I realize there's a lot of people that just like, okay, I'm going to stay away from witchcraft. And, but if they don't ever take the time to at least get a basic understanding of what witchcraft is, then they can't acknowledge it. And because I don't practice the thing, I just kind of looked at his stuff like, this man is insane. And then, then it dawned on me, like I'm outside working and, and I'm doing stuff around the house here. And I was just like, this guy is practicing divination, <laughs> like right in front of everybody. And nobody's like, um, well, and of course, because I'm curious, I spent all this time like studying this stuff because I'm just curious what it is in practice, what's going on. Just cause there's, we, we have a culture, we have all inherited lies. And once you realize that there are lies in your life, you may or may believe or whatever, but once you actually, the more you read the word, the more it's like, ah, uh, why are we doing this? This has nothing to do with Yeshua, so I'm not going to do it anymore. Or you're going to choose to believe a lie. And the word says that if you choose to believe a lie, then God will send strong delusion. That's why I don't fight with people, because if they have a lie that they're lodged in there and they're just holding on to, uh, they don't want to let it go. They're going to justify that lie as much as they can. Just like all the people that get mad at me when I bring up how, how Christmas is is uh, is pagan. Something I don't practice. I don't have to practice it. I don't have to have anything to do with it whatsoever. Now, if somebody invites me to a Christmas party, okay, whatever. Like if it's a corporate thing or something like that. And then I'm over there like, oh, you know, this is pagan, right? So, yeah, I'm fun to have at a party, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I did it when I was married. That was one of the reasons they didn't like me because... You know, I'm pointing out all these little things like, oh, you know where that came from? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, anyway, 
But yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. And he's also, in his mind, he's lodged in this idea that it will happen this year. And so, got it, got to fit it, got to shoehorn it in there, got got to make everything fit. Um, and then I had somebody in the comments basically say, you know, I I follow you know Yom Teru. I, I I you know want to know when when that day is when the the crescent and the new moon spotted. Um, but I really don't think it's this year, and I'm with you. Uh, I'm, I'm still looking at it, and some people will actually mock this, and it's just like I'm, I told people that before this event that Paul talks about, you know, I'd be married. It's not even, we can leave that part off of it. My life is not a sign for any of you. It is not anything. Just that's what God promised me, God showed me was going to take place, and I think it's, and even though it was just one little small little thing that I had in the dream and a few subsequent other things that, that confirmed it for me. Um, beyond that, uh, I think that it's a lot bigger because of what's going on in my life now. So I, you know, I haven't spoken, I haven't seen my children in over a decade. I think that when it's all said and done, that I'll have a relationship with them. And there's probably a good chance that uh, they won't have a relationship with their mother when when they find out the truth of the whole thing and when it actually uh, took place. Um, so there, there are some things that I'm kind of speculating on just because I kind of keep tabs, but I just sit here and I'm watching what God is doing in my life. And so it, it, I never really meant for people to think, oh, you know, like, uh, well, when Hamrick finally gets married, well, that doesn't mean anything either. It just I'm just saying it's going to happen before because it can't happen after because Paul said, after the fact, we'd be like the angels. And that's why I've been able to caution people over the years. In 2014, I was part of a whole group and um, they were like, oh, the date count fits and all that. Even Torah calendar uh, had uh, to the, uh, the year 6,000 starting uh, on um, uh, Yom Teruah in 2014. I don't remember the exact date that it was. Uh, and so, but I was like, no, God's shown me that this is going to happen in my life, and it hasn't happened yet. So, um, and then, uh, you know, 2016, that's when I got on here, and, uh, um, you know, we did the same thing. I'm, I, we spotted the crest of the new moon. I remember seeing it when I was in California, uh, and that was when I made the argument that I didn't think that, that uh, the, the Yom Teruah was actually going to land on the Revelation 12 sign. It was going to be a day apart. Um, and that's what got me on the map out here, which, and it happened, you know, every, you'll still see people, oh, it happened on that day. No, the sighting of the new moon was the 21st. The sign itself was the day of the 23rd, which would have been the evening of the 22nd. Um, so that's that, there's that. And I'd probably discard that whole thing, given my current um, lack of respect for the guy that uh, discovered it. If it weren't for the fact that Kim Clement had not prophesied that sign's existence three years prior. So there's that. Plus, you don't have to be, uh, you know, good, know anything about astronomy to look at that and be like, that lines up with what Revelation 12 says. I mean, I showed it to people that didn't believe, and they're just like, you know, because they, they, they saw exactly what it was. Um, and again, when it comes to signs, the other side of that is that was why God put the sun, moon, stars up there to serve as signs and for seasons and days and years. Uh, and so, yeah, there's that. But anyway, moving past that point, I just wanted you guys to acknowledge and see what this is actually, what this guy's actually doing with all his little things and interpretations and all these little weird stuff going around. Like he's, this is all divination. He's using omens and and divination, and basically he's involved in witchcraft, which goes back to, can a Christian be a Christian and practice witchcraft? And again, the answer is both yes and no. You can do it ignorantly, uh, as I did for many years when we were holding hands for prayer or bringing a tree into the house and celebrating uh, Yeshua's birthday. Uh, so it can be done ignorantly, and then, but then there's the people that overtly are messing around with this stuff that, no, you're not a Christian. You, you haven't come to a point where you're like, hey, I want to serve God, and I'm going to forsake the, the evil world that, that exists out there. Um, so yeah, there's that. So um, I'm sure that I've probably ticked off more people, and that's fine, because... I'm not here to do things to please people. I'm here to do things to please God. And so I want people to realize and acknowledge exactly what is going on here uh, so that they can see it 
uh, for what it actually is. Um, kind of clever, but that's how deception works. You know, you, you gotta you gotta dangle the carrot for the thing that people want, and then try to get them to learn something they probably should not to. Anyway, have a good one.